Okay, hello everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Andrea Frittoli. I work for IBM and I'm the current uh, PTL for the QA program. Hi, my name is Kenichi. I'm working for NEC and uh, I am previous QA PTL for Newton on, and Ogat Cycles. Okay, so just before we start, I wanted to uh, um, get an idea of how familiar you are with QA program and our tools. So um, maybe if I can ask you a favor, if you um, know about DevStack or if you used it before, if you could raise your hand. DevStack? DevStack. Yeah. Oh, DevStack, yeah, okay. And if you know about Tempest or you used it before, you, okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. And if you know about pay paid and you hate it or love it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, I, I will explain something as a first. So as a first, uh, what is a QA project? So QA project is quality assurance project and uh, here is a mission statement of a QA project develop, maintain, and initiate tools and plans to ensure the upstream stability and quality, uh, and quality of OpenStack and, and its readiness, its readiness at any point on in release, release cycles. Most important thing is that we uh, ensure release readiness always. Uh, on upstream development, developer post patches to get it, and uh, these patches need to be passed on the get testing. Uh, this uh, this test uh, these tests verify uh, each patch does not break existing test. To do that, we ensure each patch uh, is is uh, it. Uh, the repository is always uh, release readiness. That is very important things for us. And the QA project is a hor uh, horizontal team like doc team or something, and uh, users are OpenStack developer, packager, and uh, operators, not uh, normal or end users. So here is a project background. Uh, QA project founded during the for some release of OpenStack. And uh, the first IRC meeting was August 2012, almost five years ago. And early, at the early stage, uh, we had uh, very few contributors, but now we have almost 200 contributors for the previous Ogata release. That is a great thing, and thank you for contributing so much. And uh, user adoption, uh, uh, as I said, uh, QA components are used on most OpenStack projects for CI, which means uh, getting tests. And the upper graph shows uh, how much jobs runs on the gate. Each job contains uh, 30,000 tests. Uh, that means, uh, so graph shows uh, uh, 1,000 jobs on per hour on average. That means we are testing uh, 30 million tests on per hour on the gate testing. That is a great thing. And uh, QA team is concentrating on six core projects like Cinder, Nova, or something. And uh, but. Uh, we are on big tent policy, and uh, we have many projects except no uh, core project. So we needed to provide some mechanism for verifying uh, stability for this project, and we are provide plugin mechanism for uh, some component that is a grenade, a tempest, and dev stack. Most. Uh, up, uh, lower graph shows how many uh, how many projects are used uh, each component uh, each 
plug-in mechanism. Biggest number is DevStack because big tent projects want to deploy their own component for testing on the gate. And uh, we are here, many companies used Tempest as internal uh, integration test suites internally. Um, but now we are uh, QA team, uh, QA project is out of scope from user survey. But we'd like to get some feedback from users and we have uh, QA forum tomorrow morning. So please join if you interested or you have some complaint or uh, some idea, please join this uh, forum. Ah, oh, sorry, this is my slide. So uh, we, we have many component as a, for QA, and uh, this slide show a part of a QA component, not all. And uh, most famous component is Tempest as an integration test suites, and Grenade is uh, upgrade test suites, uh, upgrade, uh, Grenade verifies uh, upgrade does not remove existing resource or uh, we can use old configuration on new component or something. And the patrol is relatively new, uh, young projects uh, that is started in this year. And patrol verify uh, Policy JSON, uh, with, uh, with policy JSON works fine. On, uh, and uh, DevStack is development tools for developers. Please don't use DevStack for production environment. That is, and uh, OpenStack has uh, stack bits shows some get uh, get status for. Uh, for developers and uh, hacking bash hate s rank is code style checking and OS testar is uh, testar wrapper for OpenStack specific projects. Uh, that is all for me and please ex explain uh, Pike's tema, Andrea, please. Yeah, um, so we kind of have a common themes across the QA project for Pike. Um, so we are a horizontal team, as you mm -hmm. said, okay. yep. and um, so we serve the community, and um, we want to provide developers with uh, good tools because they they use them in their daily development work or testing, or we run mm -hmm. a lot of this uh, in the gate, 30 millions per hour, perhaps. So um, we w really wanted to focus this cycle on, on stability, on polishing this tool up and make sure that they are nice and usable. So um, in Tempest specifically, uh, for instance, we have a set of APIs that are exposed um, to the OpenStack communities so if you want to implement tests using uh, Tempest uh, plugin framework or just using Tempest runners or just the library. Um, the fact is um, that a lot of plugins or tests outside of Tempest, they use today uh, modules in, within Tempest that are not marked as stable APIs by the QA team because they were not ready, but the project needed them, so they just start using them. Um, so we are going through a kind of uh, slow process mm -hmm. and this cycle to clean those up, trying to have the least possible impact on our consumers with the end uh, target to have them stable, marked as stable and maintained so we then can ensure, we can ensure backward compatibility in future on every interface which is needed by the community. Um, unfortunately, having those uh, stable APIs is not enough uh, to have a stable gate. So we saw um, in the beginning of the bike cycle, um, we had the gate in rather bad conditions, so the number of uh, false negative was spiking, which gives a pretty poor developer experience. So if you submit a patch 
and it fails and then you go and look and there is an error which is totally unrelated to what you're doing and it's like okay <laughs> you spend time investigating and effort in there and so um, it turns out that it was a combination of things that evolved over time so some of the services that we run um, in the gate they had a memory footprint which grew over time mm -hmm. and we added more services we added more tests which generated more load on the system under test. Um, so just to make the combination of effects even worse, we had a version of Libbert which under the specific stress condition that was in the gate was starting to crash. Yeah. Um, so, and then we had like kind of untuned MySQL as well. So there were quite a number of factors that um, all together um, created the situation, so by solving them one by one, we managed to get the gate back into kind of stable place. Uh, it was an effort done uh, not only by the, the QA team at all, it was with many people from all the projects, they jumped yeah. in and helped, so it was thanks everyone who helped here, and hopefully we can um, have ideas in the future mm -hmm. to avoid this from happening again, because it was yeah. kind of a showstopper, everyone had to look into these fix yes. things that we, could, we couldn't do anything and that's why I put it as a theme because it was really like taking a chunk of the beginning yeah. of a bike. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, the other thing is I was mentioning briefly is usability is um, it's all good to have stable interfaces but if it's totally unclear how to use them they're not useful at all. So we are focusing a lot in uh, creating better documentation with plenty of examples mm. so that you uh, can get codes to see how basically how to use the interface what is a recommended way to uh, right code to use our tools. Um, something that is kind of always a theme for us is on interoperability. We are not directly responsible for interoperability. That's another uh, project and a team that looks into that. But they use our tools. Uh, so there are changes that go through Tempest or some of our tools that for which we kind of have to raise a flag, a red flag and say, okay, well, this looks like a change that if it goes through, it means that there could be a backward incompatible mm -hmm. change in an API of some service. So we kind of have this role of, we cannot really gate on that, but we can at least raise a flag so that yeah. the, the project or whoever is involved can, is aware about that. Um, more specifically, so what we, did we do in, uh, in Pike? Uh, so for Tempest, we increase the surface of stable interfaces. We're still doing it. We still have some bike time <laughs> ahead of us. Um, we plan to work on um, increasing the uh, number of uh, schema that we have. So we have for Nova, uh, we have JSON schemas that we use for validating uh, the responses on the APIs. Mm -hmm. And we want to have these for all the services. This is a kind of midterm target that we, it's going probably to go beyond Pike, and um, we're working a lot on documentation. Yeah. For that stack point of view, we did some performance tuning. Um, also, that stack is mostly bash code, mm -hmm. uh, but some of the function that used to be written in bash, they've now been moved into that stack tools. It's an external uh, project, which is Python based. So they are easier to maintain. They have nice unit tests and everything. Mm -hmm. um, we switched to the, um, Ubuntu Cloud Archive packages for Libvirt, so we could get the latest, or a later version of Libvirt, that, which solved some of the instability issues in the gate. Mm -hmm. Also, we started running the services under system D as opposed to screen, uh, which brings a usability benefit in terms of reading, um, filtering, log, um, when you're developing. There are some utilities you can use in combination with system D to filter log files. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a core new feature, uh, of course, is Patrol. It's a new service yes. that we have. Um, one of the main things, of course, is to build the test coverage for the core project. So Keystone, Glance, Nova, um, Cinder, Neutron, Swift. Yes, right. <laughs> Did I get them? <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, because it's a new project, you have to set up the repository, build, set up the CI, make sure you have docs, releases, um, jobs, uh, everything generated. So all the kind of administrative things around creating a new project. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much uh, 
in place now. So shout out to the patrol team that did a great job during Pike to get this in place. And of course, still during Pike or maybe and then beyond, uh, it, uh, the idea is to uh, get other projects beyond the six projects involved in this because um, one of the things that patrol um, can do apart from testing um, the, the policy is actually enforcing a common handling of authorization failures on policy across projects. So it's interesting for projects also beyond the six one, core ones that we handle in, in, in QA to, to have tests for, for policy. And so we'll need some kind of plugin mechanism similar to what we have in the other projects. OpenStack Health and StackBits, they are really, um, I find them really useful, at least personally I use them when I have to debug the gate, mm -hmm. because uh, with OpenStack Health you can see trends, so if you see a failure in a test you can have more context, you can know, oh, this is the first time it fails or it mm -hmm. fails every now and then, it's really a flaky test, why do we still have it there? Mm -hmm. Or you can find this kind of back, uh, context to, and um, it helps a lot. So it's in a state where now where it's there, it's running, it's fine, it gives you some information. It, it could do more, but we don't have many contributors really. We don't have bandwidth to mm -hmm. contribute much to this project. So if you're a JavaScript developers, um, developer and you want to contribute, please uh, reach out to us. We really need help with these yeah. two projects. And upgrade testing. So um, we had some discussions in the beginning. Um, of the pike cycle at the PTG about uh, doing things uh, for rolling upgrade, or zero downtime upgrade, which are very interesting for operators to, to have. Um, with Granade, what we do now, it's very useful. We make sure, like you said, that we can use the old configuration, that we don't break things that way, and we don't break existing resources. Um, but um, to do that, we shut the entire cloud off, then we do the upgrade, and then we turn everything on again. It would be a more uh, interesting scenario for operators to know that we can actually do rolling upgrade. Yeah. And this is something that Nova started to do in their own gate, for instance, using Grenade, upgrading only one of the two compute. Um, but yeah, so we had some volunteers from OSIC that plan to work on this, but because of uh, the news you have heard with um, OSIC not being there anymore, so they're not working on this anymore. So yeah, this is an area where yeah. uh, we could use contributions again. So beyond Pike, so what are the themes that we have in mind? Um, um, so ideally, <laughs> we would be able to um, increase our scope do more things, do rolling upgrades, do new cool things, new type of pro new type of testing, do more things, um, and also well, scale. Yeah. Um, Performance. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So do do more things, maintain the things that we're doing, um, but in reality, for QA and other horizontal projects, it's kind of uh, not so easy to get um, permanent new contributors. So we get a lot of occasional contributors, mm. but it's kind of hard for companies to say, okay, well, I will invest 10 of my very good engineers in doing QA and infra um, because you don't get a direct or obvious return out. It's not like, okay, you put these engineers in QA and then you get a new shiny feature in Nova coming out of it. You get benefits, but they are kind of less directly measurable. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to, to get more uh, contributors which are 100% committed uh, to this project. Um, so there are other things that we can do. So we can make sure that uh, we can benefit as much as possible from uh, occasional contributions, mm. which is something that we are trying to do, but we need to do better. Um, we can streamline uh, our processes, make sure that um, it's easier to follow through, to use the QA tools, uh, to maintain them over time, so we spend less time in that. Uh, but there are other things that we can do, for instance, if we want to do more projects, uh, like uh, we want to have rolling upgrade testing, we want to have uh, scale testing. These are things that a lot of companies, they're maybe already doing in downstream, 
and there are like parallel efforts happening in, in different companies. So if we manage to bring some of this effort together in the open, then it could be beneficial for all the companies. There are a lot of uh, subtleties and difficulties in doing this uh, because maybe there are different type of scenarios, different type of deployments. But I think uh, the type of deployments of OpenStack, they're kind of getting more aligned and mm -hmm. they're, we're getting to a state where it could be possible to to do this more and then get new, contribu new contributions in this way because then it becomes more like for a company, okay, well, rather than investing all this effort in doing this kind of QA locally, I could put some of the engineers in maintaining this uh, process in upstream together with other engineers, but and then we all get a benefit similar to what was done, for instance, for the stable branches or, well, for OpenStack in general, anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, another theme that we could have for Queens um, is uh, adjacent com communities. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that in English. <laughs> um, like Kubernetes or Ansible. So that's uh, critical for OpenStack to start working with, with this kind of communities. And even from a QA point of view, it makes sense um, probably to share at least best practices or experience. We have a lot of, a few years of experience behind us in running CI and running tests for, for OpenStack. And it probably makes sense to, uh, for some of us to go out and try to, and talk to people that do, they're doing QA in these other communities and see if there are uh, things they could benefit, benefit from, contribute in, their, in these communities. And hopefully they will also come back and contribute into OpenStack. So this is also a way we can create more interest in our tools and more, get more contributions. Interoperability, of course, stays there as a thing that we always have in our mind. In terms of more um, detailed features that we could think of for Queens, um, well, as I mentioned, rolling up rate testing is always under the radar. We could think of fault injection, a CHA type of testing. It's something which is difficult to have in the gate, but it could be done in different kind of scenarios like periodic or mm -hmm. third party um, testing. There will be some work to be done again on Tempest on uh, schema, JSON schemas that we will continue over to, to Queens. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that was mentioning earlier, the problems we had with the gate in the beginning of Pike, um, I think we could do, and it would not be too difficult to, to build some kind of automation to monitor this. So we already collect a lot of data. We collect these stat logs from the, the gate runs. It would be interesting to collect this data and aggregate it over time and monitor it so that we can see if we start having deviations. So a single run is not statistically relevant here, mm -hmm. but if we collect and aggregate the data, we should be able to see that at some point in time, the footprint, the memory footprint for a certain service is significantly increasing. <coughs> Sorry like 10% more or so, so then we can take action before the actual entire gate collapses because of the sum of the effects. So this is something that we could work on maybe together with the infra team and try to get this sorted out so that we can, we don't have to invest all the time in this again. Um, other things we could work on, um, I was mentioning um, non-functional testing yeah. on third party premises could be a first step. Uh, to get results from, uh, I don't know, scale test, for instance, done uh, on uh, downstream mm -hmm. premises, uh, and, but get this result publicly available to be shared. And so mm -hmm. cross community testing, there is a, a feature in, uh, in Zool 3, which hopefully is coming soon, which will allow to do something uh, quite interesting to use if your node it depends on uh, feature in the gate. So basically you can write a patch in a project and you can say this patch depends on a patch which is in another project, in a different project within OpenStack. And then Zool will take the different pieces and put them together and run the test with a combination of patches. So now Zool 3 will support doing these across boundaries. So it should be possible in future to say something, oh, I want to test this change in Tempest based on a specific change which is in test tools, for instance, or in a repository which is not maintained as part of the OpenStack ecosystem. Kubernetes or something? 
uh, uh, Kubernetes or something? Or oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah, Kubernetes, yeah, GitHub, or different kind of backends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. And maybe there is space for some of the QA tools to be used by other communities. I don't know. There is another community using Python. They could want to use Pep8 because everyone loves Pep8 loves Pep so much. So maybe. <laughs> So beyond Queens, and I'm almost finished. Um, so rather than real plan, a kind of vision, vision. Uh, yeah. because it's kind of um, a bit away in the future. So uh, you may have seen the effort that TC is doing in terms of creating a vision for the TC. They're talking about constellations. It's not fully clear to me what a constellation is yet, but it's basically the idea is to have um, a combination of services or a collection of services that OpenStack says to um, uh, users, you can use this combination because it makes sense for certain scenarios. And this would have an impact. Um, it's a kind of in the direction of uh, maybe reference architecture slightly, but not necessarily. Anyways, this kind of combination would have an impact in terms of QA because it would make sense from my point of view if we propose certain combination of services to have a tighter integration between those services in the gate. So like extend the concept that we have of integrated gate for six core project. If we say, okay, well, it actually makes sense to have a combination a scenario where you only deploy a Cinder with Manila and Keystone, mm -hmm. and then we need to test these three services together in the gate. Um, we could continue working on the area of non-functional tests and bring them kind of in the open and have common frameworks to be used there. It would be interesting, I think, to um, to have a common framework for doing kind of scalability or performance testing that can be used by different vendors against different, using different drivers against different type of hardware so that we could then compare results having a common tool which makes things easier. Uh, we could still work with contributors from adjacent communities and yeah, of course, keep an eye on interoperability mm. as usual. Yeah. Uh, some references, the priorities that we have uh, identified for Pike, the PTG is the first link, then documentation for the various projects we have there. And if you want to contact us, we are in OpenStack QA in IRC, or you can write to the mailing list, OpenStack Dev. Uh, you can quote QA in the subject for people who use filters. We have weekly IRC meetings because we are kind of diverse team geogra geographically, so we have different nations across the world, so we have two different times. We alternate for QA meetings, so hopefully you can find one that fits your time zone. Yeah. Or you can talk to us face-to-face -face, um, here at the forum or the PTG. And yeah, thank you. Thanks for bearing with, with us so yeah. late in the day on Wednesday. And yeah, if you have any questions, we should have some more time in the session, so feel free to, to ask. If you want to ask questions, um, you may want to use the, the microphone. Um, yes, I have a quick question. So um, one use case at at and is we have different like Cinder driver backends. Mm -hmm. And so um, the way we've been running Tempest in the past is we'd have to change the cinder.conf for that. Uh, like would you guys be open to possibly like within Tempest having like within the tempest.conf specify the driver? Is that something that um, we could do in Tempest? Um. <laughs> yeah, we had a similar discussion. So, um, specifying the driver uh, directly uh, probably is not something that we can do, but we can we we do have and we can have more feature flags where it makes sense. So, if certain features can be enabled and disabled, then you need to have the logic mm -hmm. in your gate to turn on. Right. and off features based on the driver that you're using, basically. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, thank you. Sure. Just wondering how far you usually extend backward compatibility. Uh, my team's still on Kilo. Okay. Um, 
so um, we have a deprecation mechanism for APIs. So, okay, so in terms of stable APIs, um, unless we deprecate something, it will be supported. If we want to change something, uh, we start a deprecation cycle that normally takes a cycle. So you get a warning for six months or so. And then if you're still using that API um, in the deprecated way, you, you will have a problem. So you can pin uh, the version of Tempest that you use. It's on PyPy, so you can pin that version. You still use the, the old version of the API, or you can upgrade to the new version of Tempest. And um, in terms of um, which cloud, which, which version of the cloud you want to, you, you can target, it's similar to um, the support we have in the, um, for the releases in general. So when uh, a release is, uh, goes end of life, we stop running uh, Tempest against that version in the gate, which means we don't do anything proactively to break it, but we don't verify anymore that it works, basically. And we may, then we will start deprecating configuration flags that were specific to older versions, so then you can probably still run most of the tests. You may have to filter out with regular expression a few tests or so. Okay, any more questions? Okay, well, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.